welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today I'm talking to Pastor Alex Montgomery, who is with Grace Covenant Worship Center in Hogansville, Georgia. We're going to be talking about righteousness and what righteousness means, and hopefully we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. Okay, Wanda, two wonderful subjects. They are. Well, in righteousness, Wanda, we've got good news. You and I today, without ever deserving it, earning it, are working for it, are just as righteous as Christ is. Now, I know anybody out there that hears that, they're going to swallow real hard when they think <laughs> that. Because the first thing we think is righteousness is something I do, something I perform. But according to the Word of God, righteousness is a being. It's who I am. Yes. Because, according to 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin, Christ, became sin for us that we might become. He became that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So if I were to go to somebody one and say, oh, brother so-and-so is really a righteous guy, most people would say, oh, he must really do some good things. I couldn't come back about brother so-and-so and say, well, you know what? He's 90% righteous, but oh boy, I know about the 10% in him. He's got some real weaknesses and some real failings. He worries a lot. He complains a lot, and he criticizes a lot of people. You know, he's mostly righteous. Couldn't be that way. You're either all righteous or you're not righteous. Yes. Because it's given to you as a gift of grace. But Wanda, here's the good news. Once I start to see that, I begin to realize that since God has called me that, I now can act who I am because I really am a righteous person. Now that I see that I am that, it's only natural to start doing righteous things. Because see, under the Old Covenant, righteousness was a doing. Old Covenant, or under the law, was laws and precepts to be obeyed. Under the New Covenant, it's now promises to be received. So we have a promise of being made righteous. So now, instead of, oh, I gotta be more holy, oh, I gotta stop sinning, oh, I gotta do better, just like the Nike advertisement, just do it. Now it's just receive it. Just receive his righteousness. And even it tells us over in Philippians that the fruit of righteousness or the working out of righteousness, that's even by him. That's not by me. So, so we didn't do anything to make ourselves righteous. Not a thing, except we, believe. Yes, and, and we can't do anything to make ourselves unrighteous. Absolutely. Yes, because Jesus did that for us. It's something that we were made. Yes. We were made righteous through what Jesus did on the cross. That's right. And so we can't mess it up. That is a great point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we can't mess it up? How can we mess up something that is innate to us, that was given to us by a gift and cannot be taken away? Because Ephesians 1.13 says we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. All that was given to us in the finished work of the cross is sealed in us. Now, it's up to us whether we'll act from that right. or we'll act from our flesh. But even Jesus said about the Holy Spirit in John 16, he said he would convict the world of sin, of righteousness, mm -hmm. and of judgment. Of sin because they don't believe on me. All sin is unbelief. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me not. And when you first read that, you go, what's that mean? I truly believe this. He had to go back to the Father. Of course, bringing his precious blood into the Holy of Holies before the Lord for us. Yes. But... He's going to let the Holy Spirit duplicate the righteousness that he received because he was made sin so that we would be made righteous. And then the Holy Spirit brings that back to billions of people that will say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he convicts me, convicts me of righteousness. Yes. So when I'm about to blow it, when I'm about to mess up, when I'm about to bring condemnation on somebody, when I'm about to say a hateful word, the Holy Spirit in that moment is not convicting me and just saying, you sinner, you bad person, right. you shape it up and do right. No, that would be me trying to do it. Here's what he says. I convict you that you are as righteous as Christ. You need to act like who you are. That's not who you are. This is who you are. Now that brings forth the fruit of righteousness. So going back to what you said, 
I couldn't say, well, so-and-so is a righteous person over here. Oh, but my Wanda, he's done some really unrighteous things. I mean, some really bad stuff, some really deceiving stuff. And a lot of people would say, that makes him unrighteous. No, it doesn't. It doesn't change him one little bit. Just as sure as the other person who is unrighteous, that is, has not received the righteousness of Christ, hasn't said yes to Jesus, could do all the good works in the world could be the president of the Optimus Club, yes. could be helping everybody in the community. All those are good things. But if he hasn't received the righteousness of God, all his righteous deeds will never make him righteous until he says, Lord, I receive what you have bought and paid for for me. The moment you do that, as it was true with Abraham, he was righteous through faith. And that's why he's called the father of faith. Well, you know, I want us to talk a little bit about something that we say, mm -hmm. like when, when a Christian, a believer, uh, does unrighteous things, mm -hmm. we say that they've forgotten who they are. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? Sure, because I fully believe, Wanda, that whenever a person sins, in that moment, and I, and I base this over on Second Peter, the first chapter, where he says, that you had forgotten that you were cleansed of your previous sins. And then before that, he was talking about virtues of, of love, of patience, of goodness. Yes. And then Peter says, if you don't do these, you have forgotten that you were cleansed from your sins. So yeah, in the moment that I'm going to mess up, I forget that I have His holiness. Yes. I forget that I have His sanctification. I forget that I have the fruits of the Spirit. And actually, I said that wrong, Wanda. It's the fruit, singular, of the Spirit. Because every one of those, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, all those are attributes of God that are now inside of Wanda Walker so in that moment where you say, oh, I've got to be more loving, I've got a choice. Do I say, come on, be more loving, come on, get it right, come on, act better? No. In that moment I go, Lord, you are loving me. So by faith, I receive it. Yes. Lord, you are, I'm feeling so sorrowful today. I feel so sad. I feel so depressed. I feel so under the gun. I feel so worthless. I feel like a failure. All of a sudden the Holy Spirit does what? Convicts you of righteousness. That's not who you are because the God that is in you, the whole message of Christ in you, not me improving myself, but Christ in me coming out, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, let his joy be your joy. So now it's a matter of believing it's mine rather than the matter of I've got to come up with it. So yeah, you're right. In that moment that the temptation, the pressure, the challenge, the trial hits me, I forget who I am, then I'll default right back to the flesh, selfishness, self-centeredness, all about me. And one of two great words that fit right in, in your statement is need and desire. So many people say, oh, I need to be loved. Well, I had to get out of this marriage because I wasn't I wouldn't being loved. Uh, I'm not going to talk to my father-in-law anymore because they don't need me. And so I can say that, boy, if I'm not needed or I don't feel like I'm needed, I'm just going to be depressed and rejected and frustrated and disappointed. That's crazy because the <laughs> righteous person is full of God. Yes. I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. So in that moment when the emptiness hits, right back to your point, I'm forgetting that I'm full. Right there in John, the first chapter, he says, and of his fullness we have all received. All right, now my feeler, which is not the real me, yes. it's not that I deny my feelings, but I can't let my feelings determine my identity. The Holy Spirit said, you're not your feelings. You are the authority over your feelings. Don't let them tell you what to do. You tell them what to do because you're full. So now I don't need, if somebody doesn't love me, doesn't like me, doesn't uh, want to talk to me, rejects me, do I have to lose it, get down in the gap uh, uh, and just say, my life is over because I just don't feel fulfilled. That's a lie. Yes. And Pastor Alex, I want you to tell about um, how Adam and Eve were complete in the garden mm -hmm. and how they didn't need anything. Absolutely. You were talking about when we know we're complete yes. and we can act out of that righteousness. Tell us how that 
was played out in the garden. Sure, and then how that connects to Jesus' temptation yes. in the wilderness. Well, obviously in the garden, they were made in the image and likeness of God. He blew into Adam the breath of the Spirit of God, so he had that fullness. Well, the whole temptation came down to the fact that the enemy was telling them, you know, you're not complete. No, you're coming up short. Hath God said... Is he really telling you the truth? And what's the implication of that? You're coming up short. You need to eat of that tree. You know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is in essence saying, I am substandard. I am inadequate. I am insufficient. So I've got to do to be. Uh -huh. I've got to take of something external to make something internal come to life when they already had that. Right. They were naked and not ashamed. There was no sense of condemnation. There was no shame at all between them. And yet the enemy said he was so slick. You know, wonder he couldn't have come in there and, and had them say, uh, uh, don't y'all commit adultery. Well, nobody else commit adultery with. Don't y'all <laughs> lie. Don't y'all cheat. Don't y'all steal. You know why? There was no law against yes. any of those. Yes. See, the enemy always comes to the place where law is to try to get us back into self-effort. Now, the law is good and holy, but we can't keep it if we try in and of ourselves. So the enemy comes right into that place of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So he uses that against them and tries to tell them, hey, God is holding out on you. He could only go to the place where the command was, thou mm -hmm. shalt not eat of that tree. Yes. And he uses that. So then they, of course, take the bait, thinking they were less than. And in that moment, did God condemn them? No. They ran away from God. Shame, condemnation. Yes. I'm less than. I don't feel full anymore. I'm empty. i got to cover myself. And, of course, they take a fig leaf, which is part of the curse of the ground, and try to cover themselves in something they made. And so in that place, Wanda, they believe the ultimate lie that so many people believe. I am empty. I don't have enough. So what, what do they do? Here's the root of sin. I try to find it in a relationship. I try to find it in a job. I try to find it in a career. I try to find it in my children. I try to find it in my house, my car, my money, my notoriety, all those things, when all the time I was full. And that's why the, the old song, I need you, oh, I need you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I don't need that from people. I need that from him because he totally feels me. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to look at a person anymore. Wanda, for years, I said, I needed to have a growing church. I needed to be successful as a pastor. And when that didn't happen and there's a lot of empty seats out there, I felt like a failure. Well, what a lie. I was believing what Adam and Eve did. Yes. I was believing I was coming up short. And then after a while, when I was able to say, I'm as righteous as Christ, I'm as full as Christ, not because I'm a great guy, but because I've received it by faith, I started to say, if it's empty today, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, if nobody likes my sermon, it's okay. If nobody shows up for the fellowship, it's okay. I don't have to wilt under that because my need is filled in Christ. Now, back to Adam and Eve. So when Jesus then goes out into the wilderness after the most important words were spoken over him by the Father as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. An identity, full, accepted, blessed. Holy Spirit drives him in the, into the desert. What's the first thing the enemy tries to do? If you be, not the beloved, if you be the Son of God, mm -hmm. then just like Adam and Eve, do something to show you are something. The ultimate lie. You've got to show you're somebody. And Jesus comes back, unlike Adam, but the second Adam, and stands against that lie of insufficiency. Even though, Wanda, he was hungry and he was thirsty, mm -hmm. his flesh still didn't come in as a sign to us. I cannot depend on the flesh. Oh, if the flesh is full, then I am full. Oh, if I am loved, then I... Or if I'm being loved, then I am loved. Those are lies. So what's he say? Man shall not live by bread alone, external to internal. Yes. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, who I am in here, I am his beloved son. What were those words? The Father just spoke them. 
He's my beloved son. So he had that word on the inside of him. Even though his flesh was dying for some bread, he said, that's not who I am. Devil, you don't have to make me prove it. I already am it. That's right. That is wonderful. Yes. And so now let's tie this in to the kingdom of God. Yeah. So seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. Right. What does that mean? Well, if I'm going to seek first the kingdom, that's basically what we're talking about. His provision, not external. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight. They'd get out there and do something to try to make it happen, baby. No, he's saying, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is here. My kingdom, Wanda, is, I believe, Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so I seek first the kingdom. That is, I'm seeking all he is, all that he has given me. What we said earlier about Romans 5, 17, we reign in life by the abundance of grace, that's kingdom, and the gift of righteousness, that's kingdom. How do I know that? Because over in Matthew 6, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his, not mine, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So the kingdom is here. Now, I know what you're going towards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do to bring that forward? Yes. What is that about? The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom yes. of God is within you. And, and what is it that is within you? Is it something? Is it just the element of righteousness? It's all a person. Wanda, one of the most important things we could say today is that none of these elements, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, patience, all those things, they're not things that God gives us. They're not entities that he plants in us. They're him. They're in him. They're, they're all of who Christ is. Yes. And then Christ has joy. Christ has peace. Christ has long-suffering when we're going through the difficult moments of life. That is the kingdom. And then it says to seek his righteousness. And how would I seek it? By believing I have it by faith walking in it. So now here comes the external part. If I know that you and I are righteous, then I ought to start doing righteous things that would pull other people into this knowing, here's evangelism, that the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. And if you seek it, what's it say there in Matthew 6? All these things, all these things, Peace, joy, love, prosperity, blessing, healing. All those things are in him. So now, according to what you and I just read over here in Romans, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Again, the yes. external. Yes. Oh, I need that. If I don't have it, I'm going to fall apart. No, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy. So if we want to pull the kingdom of God together in LaGrange, Georgia, we want to say, Holy Ghost, how do I start to promote in my community, with my friends, with people of every denomination, your righteousness, your peace? Think of how many people in this town are agitated. Yes. They don't have peace because they're hungry. They don't have peace because they're broken. They don't have peace because their family is separated. So one as I come at them with the kingdom, I am coming with a peace that passes understanding because it's first in here. And then how about the people in this town that don't have any joy? How about the people in this town that have gone through such terrible problems in their health and right now they owe so much money they don't know what they're going to do. Mm. We begin to bring to them his joy. Yes. Not necessarily changing the circumstance, but the joy of the Lord. So that could happen by giving. That could happen by distributing food. Right. That could happen by counseling. I mean, Jill and I, my wife and I, everything is about trying to counsel people in these things. So we're bringing forth the kingdom. And let me tell you what the bottom line I think of that kingdom really is. Hope. Yes. They never lose that hope. If I know I have his righteousness, I have his kingdom where every provision is already given me, and I begin to tell people, show people, then I, I let Holy, Holy Spirit show me how to bring forth your joy. He said, I want you to do this ministry. I want you to do that. And one other point, too, that kingdom is us linking together. Yes. Because it says in Ephesians 2 that we're the habitation, kingdom, of his spirit together. And he has broken down every wall of partition that could divide us. Can you imagine this, Wanda? Here's part of the kingdom. Jesus Christ took all division within himself, black, white, male, female, educated, uneducated, 
all the different divisions that our society has propagated, Jesus took those. And he said the two biggest that were the hardest to pull together, Jew and Gentile, are one. So now in the kingdom, that unity that says, you know what? I see just as righteous as Christ. So I won't judge you. I won't uh, shame you. I won't condemn you. I won't compare you. I will love you. We start taking that as the kingdom of God out. Do you not think that that won't change people's lives? It does. Because lots of people just need to be encouraged yes. and built up yes. and help through the times that they are mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it. we bring life when we bring the gospel. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I've seen it time and time again that somebody can be very discouraged but if you begin to encourage them and who they are in Christ mm -hmm. and that they are the righteousness of Christ, that's right. pure and holy in his sight, Amen. and that's how he sees you. And also, you know, we, we've talked about that there's a higher truth, mm -hmm. that, you know, there, there might be things going on in our life that are even like sinful, right? but there is a higher truth yes. that says, even though we are partaking in those things, mm -hmm. we are still righteous. Absolutely. And, and so that gives us hope mm -hmm. because we might be caught in a sin mm -hmm. and not yet able to come out of that sin. Right. And and so we're, we're there, but to give, it's almost like throwing an anchor to somebody. Yes. That's not who you are. That's right. You're righteous. And, That's it. And so it gives you hope to rise above those things mm -hmm. and to be and be the victorious overcomer that you are. Oh, absolutely, Wanda. Because Romans 6, 14 says, sin shall not have dominion over you. If we stopped right there and not have an audience of 10 people and say, well, what do y'all think stops dominion? Oh, I gotta pray more. Oh, I gotta read the Bible more. Those are good things. Oh, if I be in church more. Oh, if I repent more. Now, that's not what it says. Sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under law, but under grace. Right. What's that mean? The law is always my self-effort, always me struggling to try to do it. And so you can keep the rules and not have any relationship with God at all. I mean, the Pharisees were the best law keepers in the world, and Jesus called them whited sepulchers. Yes. But he says, you're not under law, that self-effort, that doing thing, got to be obedient, bless God. You're not under law, but you're under grace. What's grace? Is grace just about a bunch of mercy and, oh, I'll do whatever you want to? No, it's not. Grace is the ability of God that I don't have. It's him coming in me. One of this whole message, the kingdom, righteousness, everything we're saying today, is living by the life of another. I am meant to be a kingdom carrier. I am a container, Wanda. I am a container that receives. Second Corinthians 4 says, we are a vessel. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we are like a, uh, I talk about like a rain barrel, and I just receive the rain of the Holy Spirit, and then I express that right back into the environment, and it evaporates, and he rains on me. I am a container of God. Yet what's so interesting about that is the container and what's in the container, Christ's life, are one. Yes. That was the vine and the branches. What's that branch do? Oh, I got to bear some fruit. Oh, I got to do. No, he's just there. He's just receiving that, that life that's in him. And I realize I'm a container and I contain the presence of the Lord 24 7. Wanda, that brings the correct fear of the Lord, not, oh, don't strike me down. That's not it. It's, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own. That's right. And we have a divine nature. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> we have a divine nature, and it tells us over in 2 Peter 1, that as we get the great and precious promises, not the great and precious commands, right. the great and precious promises, we become partakers of the divine nature because in my spirit, Wanda, in your spirit today is the same life that Christ had. How many times he said, I've come that you may have life, eternal life, abundant life. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the bread of life. He was talking life, 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 life. Whose life is it? It's his life. Where is it? In my spirit. How do I get it out? By faith, believe I have it. Yes. By the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Grace all of his provision. Righteousness, my position. You know, it's just like in a will. 
Wanda, if I say, okay, I am the son of J.R. Montgomery, that's my position. As a son, that opens the door now to everything that daddy has. Right. All right, then the grace would be the provision, everything that daddy's left me in the will. What has the Lord left us in the will? He says, we're joint heirs. So how much of an heir is Christ of everything the Father has? Completely. Everything. And we're joint heirs? Yes. So that's the partaking of that life. It's everything he is, everything he has given to us freely, and now we receive it. It's so big, it's so rich, it's almost the too good to be true news. And what is this very thing? is what Martin Luther found out in the 16th century that started the Protestant Reformation because he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed by working harder and trying to be a better person? No, from faith to faith. And see, we just, we just by faith receive the fact that I'm a partaker of his nature. Well, the next part in that scripture in 2 Peter, it says, that's how we escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. Yes. How do we do it? Not by our struggle, by our believing I'm one with him. Not by me trying to be holy, by realizing I already am holy. Belief is always followed by behavior. Yes. Once I believe I am those things, then I will, like any child, you tell a child, you're a precious child, you're a good child. Do we have boundaries? Does sin have consequences? Absolutely it does. But when you start really not just hearing it, but believing, I'm righteous, I'm a partaker of his nature, I'm in his kingdom, yes. all these things are mine, then I will start after a while to be unconsciously competent. Like riding a bike, I just get on and start doing it. I just walk my life and righteousness just pours out of me and good works and I hate sin and I want to do things that are great. Why? Because Jesus and I are one. Yes, and that's such an exciting thing. I mean, yeah, it, it, it just is. makes you excited. <laughs> yes. And, and you know, why would you want to live your life any other way Amen, except in the kingdom of God? Absolutely. Experiencing his righteousness daily sure. and living your life to the fullness that he has planned from you from the very Absolutely. beginning and experiencing that abundant life. Yes, abundant life. That's right. He has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Whose life? His life, living in our life. So we're going to bless and help and love and encourage everybody we go around. We can't wait to do it. That's right. Okay. Well, I know that you've enjoyed today's program and I just want to encourage you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you truly make a difference on this earth. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.